All right, guys, welcome back to Dominion Domination. Um, we're in a pretty good spot here, guys. Uh, not a lot has changed since last time. I have uh, beaten the door down to the center here and just immediately just rocked out my energy production just all in one fell swoop, all in one swell foop. Um, got a bunch more energy pouring in here. Look at this, 13,453 per day. That is nuts. And uh, I inherited a level one factory. I should be building something there. Always, all factories building it all the time. Um, <clears throat> got this guy out here, inherited a factory with that. Should be building stuff here as well. Let me go ahead and get a railway started, start to produce and really get that wood churning. Uh, this one should be, since I've got part of a fa factory, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, eh. Eh, no, railway is better. That 33% boost is going to be huge in this oil field. It's just such a big, you know, the uh, what you might call the initial number or the baseline number there is so big. Um, those percentages are applied only to the original baseline value. It's not compounded. So in other words, um, if I've got three, let's say level four factory, which is also 33% bonus, that 33% bonus is applied to the initial amount of oil. It'd be great if, so once I bounce it up 33%, if then I put a uh, railway in, say, if that railway gave me a 33% bonus on the total amount, the amount after the percent had been uh, lumped in from the level four factory, that'd be cool. But it's not, that's not compounded that way. But it is cool if you think about it, um, if you have, a level four factory um, and a level level four level four factory and a railway and a harbor, which if you have a you know in other games you can have a double uh, coastal uh, resource tile, that gets you almost up to a hundred percent bonus and almost doubles your double, right? Because you get thirty three and thirty three is sixty six, and then twenty five percent more gets you close to what ninety four or whatever it is gets you close to 100%. It gives you gets you close to doubling that resource tile. Now, of course, over here, the best I can do is 66%, uh, right? Level four factory and a railway um, in terms of resource production. But that's still pretty darn good because the baseline here, I don't know what the baseline is. I imagine it's probably something around 12,000, right? So if there was nothing here, if nothing was developed whatsoever, because right now what we have is a factory that's upping this by 8%. So what is 8% of 12,000? Um, you know, it's about 120. It's less than that. It's about a hundred. So gosh, it might be the baseline here might be 13,000. All right. Cause the baseline of, uh, 8% of 13,000 would be 130. So yeah, I don't know what it is. It's useless to try to guess, but it's something, whatever the, the initial amount, the, uh, the amount before bonuses is probably around 13,000. Uh, so that's just a ton. And then once I get this built up, it's going to really, really improve that. Um, so as of now, I've got 8%, but I can get it up to 66%. So um, I'm going to be adding to this a lot more. So probably something around six or 7,000 more production coming out of here. Um, we'll come back and look at that. Once this is fully developed with a railway and a level four factory, we'll come back and look at this. But I think it's going to be somewhere around 20,000, which is just insane. I love it. Um, I do have my bombers coming in here and they're helping with this uh, two pronged attack that I've got coming down here. Somebody pointed out in my latest video that Morocco is AI now, and that is absolutely true. Morocco is no longer with us. In fact, there's very few people left in this game and I admire them. Um, this guy reached out and asked to get shared vision with me, but I noticed he had already given me shared vision. So I thought, well, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, I always accept shared vision because I, I would always like to know what's going on with somebody else. But if you give me shared vision and then try to send me a uh, agreement, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm not going to do it. What I did do, though, is I gave him right of way so that I would appear blue on his map and maybe he would be less likely to take away. So you can see I've got I gave him right of way, but I didn't let him see what's going on. And I thought that might be enough to let him uh, make him keep his shared vision for me because I like being able to see what's going on with him. He has a pretty huge stack of infantry over here. He's got 550 
infantry coming in, no cannon support, which is weird, but that's a, that's a scary amount of infantry, but that amount of infantry is, you know, it's going to wilt in front of 50 artillery. You know, it doesn't matter how many, I'll, I think I could, I could face that if I had 50 artillery, which I do have in this region. Um, I think I could fight that stack off with a hundred infantry and a good fort. So um, anyway, though, it's nice to keep an eye on them, see what's going on there. Now, one thing I did notice also is that Spain here has a stack for unknown reasons. I don't even know where, where is Spain? Where does, where does Spain spawn? <laughs> uh, nowhere around here. Where are you, Spain? Spain, Spain, where you spawn in Spain? Uh, so he's maybe, maybe he's that guy who is attacking down the middle. Here we go. So he's an AI as well. Um, yeah. So at just at some point he had right of way with Morocco and he's sitting there. And so that's why I went ahead and attacked straight across to here. Um, just to try to run, run that off at the pass. I do not want to share any of Baghdad with anyone at all. So one thing I did notice as I ran in here is that I was getting attacked with cannon. So I knew there was cannon in here. Um, I knew that as soon as my ground forces came within range. So what I did was I went ahead and held these back. So you can see this 18 hasn't attacked yet because I held them back. They were, they were scheduled to arrive just a little bit before um, this group could actually physically attack melee. So, you know, I like my land troops to engage physically in melee combat before my first attack with the cannon. And the only point there is like, I don't know what he could have done with two cannon, but two cannon might've been enough to kill one of these cannon. And I don't want to lose even one of them. Um, play your game greedy. You know, play, always play your game greedy. You don't want to lose a single thing more than you have to. So again, um, this guy came in and started raining down back here. And since they're split, they're not as powerful as they used to be, but they're still attacking with 27 damage per attack. And that's, that's significant. That's, that's a nice amount of damage. Now, what I am doing here as well, um, he attacked outward and captured this territory. And you saw earlier, it was a big old stack. Let me just, let me show you something here. Um, I, I went ahead and took a photo, um, a screenshot, really, I should say. Um, and it's under my new sub game. No, uh, new channel for real. Okay. So, um, let's see, why am I having a brain attack here? So, uh, oh, I really thought I had that screenshot. Oh, here it is. It just looked like all the others. So this is a screenshot that I took um, right after I had won Baghdad here. And this is before I divided my cannon into two stacks. I left two behind in the middle to defend it. But just look at this swarminess. That is just redonkulous. 90, 90, 90, that's 270, that's 330. And that's not to mention that there's still stuff out here, including once I attacked in here, there was two cannons. So I think there's probably still two cannon in every province. Even at this late state, I've already taken Baghdad proper. And then look who comes up uh, running over to here. Um, this is 187 and 52 here. Like what? Like 250 guys attack over here. So naturally they shredded what was over here. Um, I did back these nine out. I, let me see if I've still got those. I think I do. But uh, I mean, just think about that. This is, what is this? 330 and then over here, 250. So like, that's just nuts. That's almost 600 that I can see. That's not even to mention all these on the outside here that I can't see. 600. Now this is after I've already defeated like what? Uh, like 300 in here, like a huge amount here and a huge amount in this ring. So I I wouldn't be surprised if, if Baghdad proper has maybe as many as... Uh, 1200 troops and then who knows how many cannon just too many cannon it's it is really ridiculous uh, but i wanted you guys to see that as well um i took a screenshot of that i was just like are you freaking kidding me like how much stuff is he gonna throw at me now um you can see now that is a shame that's a big shame so i pulled i pulled that nine cannon back and i thought i pulled them back in time but it's looking like i did not so if I went back to the newspaper, I could find where I lost that stack of nine cannon. And as I mentioned before, I hate that. I really should not have allowed that to happen. But what did happen is he conquered out to here and then conquered out to here uh, before I was able to uh, really get it under control. But I will tell you those nine cannon, they paid, uh, they paid for it because there was <laughs> 250 guys here 
and now there's one. So um, I'm gaining, I'm gaining this territory back. This six came from over here and I will now have six bombers um, who are really going to help me a lot as I clean up the rest of Baghdad. Now, in addition to the six bombers, I have one, two, three, nope, three, four more bombers and a fighter. You saw that four bombers and a fighter and over here, two more bombers. So that's six bombers, one, two more, six bombers and two fighters. So I'm starting to build some fighters just in the possibility. I mean, there's just nobody else in this game who's even close to me. And this guy over here has zero cannon and for some reason, a rail gun. So, okay. You know, I'll build a few rail guns late in the game. And they're actually, this is one of the places I like to build them is in the middle of an oil field because then you can set up defensive uh, positions in the four uh, ringing territories here and your railgun can reach anything that's happening in all of those. So it's one of my favorite places to put railguns is in the middle of an oil field. Um, but I, I, I think before I built, you know, one railgun, I would have preferred to use the resources and time to build four cannon. Um, but, you know, you do you, bro. Um, he's certainly dominating his quadrant and he's one of the only other uh, player characters who has an oil field um, over here. This is still Najaf, the original owners over here. This is still Basra, the original owners. And over here, this is still Ramadi. Uh, you guys ever go to the Ramadi Inn? It's a hotel. All right. And then of course, over here, Kirkuk, who's just scary. He's so big. And as I mentioned, um, name of your sex tape. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned before, this is scary because I saw in the newspaper that he'd been building factories and stuff. So he's he is not idle. He's doing stuff over here. And the AI can get pretty scary if you, I mean, this is a lot of area. So there's going to be a lot of infantry in here, just a ton. And, uh, and the AI is pretty crafty. They stack their borders. They keep their borders tight and toit. And, uh, and then also develop stuff. You can see this is developed. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to bomb it out as I go in there. So, I, you know, I always like to take stuff with, with land forces if I can, but usually you have to, you have to come in with bombers and, artillery and whatnot. So that is my next uh, my next point of attack here, unless things change radically. Oh, I wanted to keep you updated here. This is actually a really sweet little deal I've got going on over here. The idea that that I'm having <laughs> Argentina is my prison guard. I, it's like I've, I've subcontracted the job out to him. And, uh, and all I'm doing is just sort of sitting here defending him. So anything that comes out of here and comes at him, um, I'll be able to have a chance to attack. Now, the good thing, too, is that this guy, um, you know, turned and cried and ran home, you know, days ago, like I knew he would, like they always do. But the good thing is that at least now it's not a mean spirited uh, person back here. It's just an AI. So what you know, if 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 the butthurt boy was still here, he would still he'd be building rail guns and he'd attack over Argentina and attack me. But the fact is now it's AI and the AI doesn't prioritize. He's at war with both of us. He's at war with Argentina and with me. So he will absolutely attack Argentina first. He'll just attack the closest enemy. Now you can see he's continuing to stream out stuff out to here. And this is why I've got two defensive positions. I've got a strong fort with 31 infantry in it. I've got two that are back. So those guys will rein in on anybody. And then I've got three that are to the side. And you say, well, why do you have 10 infantry there? That's just on the off chance that I go to sleep and he comes out here with a cannon, right? So a cannon conceivably could come out here and start raining down and attacking these three cannon. So I've just got those 10 infantry as a bit of a meat shield situation going on there. Um, I don't anticipate it. I haven't seen anything out of here except for just a, a never ending stream of infantry. But every once in a while, um, the AI is crafty. They'll build up a force and then send a bunch of guys at one time. So who knows what could happen? But um, certainly I do like having this fighter over here, kind of just out there. If I see a railgun rolling up, I'll know. Um, over here, I have enough vision um, just from this, um, you know, ground unit uh, over here to know if something comes out here. Because, uh, again, I'm not really worried about a railgun throwing over Argentina at me, but I do want to be alert for anything that is attacking Argentina um, because I'm next, right? And so I love my position here, though. I, I think it's beautiful that Argentina just cooperated and attacked across, and now I'm subcontracting them to be the prison guard for these guys. So really, I don't have to have as beefy of a pres presence here as I have in the past. Um, I'm going to continue because, you know, there were all these factories that a new boy left behind. I'm, I'm building cannons in all of them. There's one, two, uh, three cannon, 
and I believe that's it. So I think there's three cannon building right now, which is beautiful. One, yeah, one, two, three. Oh, four, I believe. I'm counting weird. I, I think there's four. Yeah, there's probably not. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Wow, that was that was the most struggle you'll ever see a grown man uh, to count to four. Like, holy crap. But yeah, I've got four cannon developing over here. And I'm just going to send them over to, um, to, to help me out with the guard situation. Um, eventually, of course, they will be part of a bigger push. Um, I am a little concerned about uh, Union of South Africa, which is, of course, um, why it's always a good idea to give them right away, right away. <laughs> give them right of way, right away. Um, because hopefully he won't feel the need to attack me. Um, let's do just check my popularity right now. It's not bad. 53 is not actually that bad. Um, I've mentioned this. Maybe I gained some sympathy because I got literally this guy went to war with me three times, right? Once to take back the territory that had rebelled to me. And then we made peace. And then once to attack me um, with one cruiser. And then we went back to peace. And then the last time to attack me with two cruisers and 51 guys. And and by that time, I'd had enough. I said, I'm coming after him. And thank goodness I did, because when I came across to attack him, what did I find but a railgun making its way this direction? And he's such a noob, he didn't stop the railgun. The railgun never fired on me once. The railgun was just automatically set to position itself here so they could start raining across the, the channel at me. So I literally just ran up and destroyed the railgun. Just so much resources, so much money wasted. Ah, oh, what a noob. But it's good that I went ahead and attacked. My instincts were good because he was not going to just leave it alone. Because I was tempted that, I was tempted to go, okay, we could go back to peace and then I could just continue my, you know, supposedly noob proof game here. Um, but something told me, no, this guy, you know, he's already attacked you twice. No, this is the third time he's attacked you. So no, you know, like fool me once, shame on me. F what Fool me twice, shame on well, I'm not going to get fooled again. So that was a George Bush quote. Anybody who knows how stupid George W. Bush was. All right. Um, so anyway, that's it. I, I love my situation over here. I feel very secure against the noob. This is actually the best contain I've ever had. And I do have four more cannon that are going to join in over here and really try to protect my Argentinian uh, bodyguards over here. Um, six more bombers and two fighters on the way. Six bombers on the field. Like I, I I'm, I'm, I'm getting overconfident, so I, I need to be careful. But I really feel like this attack is going to win. Um, I've got a lot of material here. Okay, we finally can see what's here. There is one cannon left. But I, I believe there was two probably. Let's see what. Yeah, there was two here. So I think it's sensible to, to believe that each of these have two cannon in reserve. Um, so that's what's going down over here. I did go ahead and send this in. This was the, the guarded community out here, and he never sent anything to this one because he sent fucking 270 guys to this one. And then even attacked on out to here as well. But uh, so I wonder if I should. Yeah, I was going to say, should I go ahead and build more barracks? Because I've got just a ton of wheat. and I'm about to get more foodstuffs here. Just two more wheat. Yeah. So really, when I build these out, I'm going to build barracks and all of them and just start churning out the infantry. Because I do have Inspector Swarmy over here with 500 guys coming towards me. And I know he's going to want a piece of this action over here, but maybe, I mean, if he's smart, he'll attack over to here. Um, I don't see him moving towards this one necessarily, although that would probably be easier. Um, but I mean, I say easier, but it's like, sure, this, this AI is at war with four countries. So there are four other AIs around the map that are harassing him in the same way that the AIs harass me. So he's getting attacked into by probably these... Probably these three guys here. I don't know. I don't care. Um, but so he's being harassed as well. But just so much area, so many factories and so much time. And he's had possession of a lot of resources for a long time. Yeah, this is building up to 15,550, which is more than mine. But simply that just means it's maxed out. It's got a full level four factory and it's got a full uh, railway there. So pretty cool. Um, anyway, so that's it, guys. Um, I do want to look at this and see. Very interesting. Hit points, five out of eight. So that's weird. Level two has eight. Let's see if we can find a level one factory somewhere. Where do I have a level one factory? I think back over here. Um, I think a level one factory might have four hit points. 
Yeah, four hit points. So does that mean, so I'm going to throw this out there to anybody who wants to answer. Look at this. It says question mark out of four. Oh, it says level one factory. It puts a question mark where the level normally is, but it's telling me that it's a level one factory. Isn't that weird? Level one barracks. So that's a lot more information than I have any right to know. Level one fortress. Like I'm nowhere near this. I don't have any intel at all. I'm like, this is a satellite image, but this is World War One time. So there's no way I should be able to know what's in there. And yet I do. I know there's a level one factory. So, okay. Um, he doesn't have it maxed out, but he's, you know, he's building up stuff there. Um, but that's good. Okay. So 13,000 over there. And I, I believe we said I had, uh, that was 15,000. I have 13 here, but that's going to get up to as much as 20, maybe even more. So I'll keep you posted on that. All right. So that's about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, really soon I will have 12 bombers and two fighters on the map. And that is a nice little air force. That's the kind of air force I can do stuff with. Um, I may peel off. I, I, there's just no reason to, I was going to say, I might, might peel off a few bombers over here just to have them uh, be little strike forces because he will bust out with a big group of stuff. Um, but I don't think that's really necessary. Really. Once I have four more cannon built over here, um, then I should be able to have five and four cannon defending my guards here, defending my bodyguards. So I think it's going to be all right. I don't think I need to peel off bombers. So I can keep that 12 together, that dirty dozen together, and just rain down terror upon the populace. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you all next time. Adios, mi amigos.